Well, hey, everybody, Mr. Reeves back with you for our second video on lesson 18.2, Equations with Rational Numbers. All right, so in the previous video, I introduced you to the idea of working with an equation with fractions and multiplying by the least common denominator or the least common multiple of the denominators. And then we looked at equations with decimals and talked about the fact that if you want to eliminate tenths, you can multiply by 10. And if you want to eliminate a hundredths, you can multiply by 100. And if you want to eliminate a thousandths, you can multiply by a thousand. My recommendation to you was with fraction equations, always go ahead and multiply out by the least common denominator to eliminate the fractions. But with decimals, uh, most of the time, just work them out with the decimals just like they are. All right, okay, so I'm gonna work through now some practice problems from the assignment. So here we go, this is number two in the Math 7 textbook, by the way, this page number, I should probably say what page number we're on. We're on page 568 in the textbook. Okay, so here we go. So we have in number two denominators of four, one, four, and one. Remember, when you have a whole number, the denominator is one. So this one's pretty easy. I'm going to go ahead and multiply everything by four. I usually like to write it like this, where I multiply both sides by four. All right, before I solve that, I'm going to go to this one here and take a look at my denominators. My denominators are 1, 5, and 10. So the least common multiple of the denominators in this case is going to be 10. And then this one right here, well, I've got 11 and 1 and 1 and 11. So once again, this one's a little bit easier because I'm simply going to multiply both sides by 11. All right, so that first step in eliminating those fractions is finding that least common denominator or the least common multiple of the denominators. Now I'm going to go ahead and multiply everything through, which means I'm going to be applying the distributive property. So here we go. That 4 divided by that 4 makes 1. 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 1 times 3n is going to give me 3n minus. Now there's no denominator here to divide by. So I get 4 times 18. Well, 4 times 18 is the same as 8 times 9. That's going to give me 72. All right. Well, 4 divided by 4 is 1. So this is going to give me 1n. And 4 times 4 is 16. All right. So here is my new equation with variables on both sides. So let's go ahead and solve it now. Remember, when you have variables on both sides, you find the smaller coefficient on the variable. In this case, 1 is smaller than 3, so I'm going to subtract that away. Wouldn't you know it? I'm out of space. Let's see if I can squeeze it in right here. So when I do this, 3n minus 1, and that's going to give me 2n minus 72. And over here, those are going to cancel, right? And I'm left with negative 16, all right? So now what do I have now? I have a two-step equation. I'm going to do the opposite operations in the opposite order. So instead of multiplying by 2 and subtracting 72, I'm going to add that 72 to both sides, giving me 2n is equal to, let's see here, well, 76 minus 16 would be 60. So what's that going to put us at? 56. All right, and now I'm going to divide by 2 because that's the opposite of multiplying by 2. And I get n is equal to 28. n is equal to 28. And if I were to put this 28 back into this original equation, I should get the same thing on both sides. A quick check. Let's see here. 3 fourths times 28 minus 18, if I'm correct, should be equal to 1 fourth of 28 minus 4. All right. Well, 3 fourths of 28, I can do 28 divided by 4. And get 7, 28 divided by 4 is 7, times 3 is 21. 
and 21 minus 18. Wow, that's 3, right? Over here, I have a fourth of 28. 28 divided by 4. 28 divided by 4 is 7. And 7 minus 4 is 3. Well, would you look at that? That one checked out much nicer than the one in the previous video did. All right, here, I'm multiplying everything by 10. Again, I'm going to distribute that 10. All right, this one, there's only one term to multiply it by. Here we go. 10 times 6 is 60. Plus, let's see here, 10 divided by 5. 10 divided by 5 is going to be 2. 2 times 4, that's going to give me 8b. 10 divided by 10 is going to be 1. 10 divided by 10 is 1 times 9b is 9 B. Here we go. Now I got an equation with variables on both sides. I'm going to look at the coefficients and subtract away the term with the smaller coefficient. There we go. So I get 60 is equal to B. Well, what do you know? Look at that. I got the answer there in just one step. Just one step. And if I were to put that 60 back in here, I'm pretty darn sure it would be correct because both sides would be equivalent all right last one here with fractions i'm going to multiply everything by 11 i'm going to apply that distributive property well that 11 divided by 11 is 1 so that gives me 2m plus 11 times 16 i'm pretty sure that's 176 here we go 11 times 4 is 44 11 divided by 11 is going to be 1 and i get 6 M. All right. Okay. Let's look for the smaller coefficient. That's two. So I'm going to subtract two m from each side. All right. Those are going to cancel. And what do I have? I have 176 is equal to 44 plus. Oh no! I'm going to hit the scroll bar. 44 plus 4 m. Oh, it doesn't matter because it's just a picture of the scroll bar. Okay, and here we go. Now we're going to subtract 44 because we have a two-step equation. So we're going to do the opposite operations in the opposite order. 6 minus 4 is 2. 17 minus 4 is 13. So I get 132 is equal to 4m. I'm pretty sure that 4 is going to go into that evenly. In fact, I know so because it ends in 32. 4 goes into 13. 4 times 3 is 12. 31. There we go. All right, so m is equal to 31 right here. That's where the answer for that one. Okay, so again, when you are given an equation with fractions, find the least common denominator and multiply everything in that equation by the least common denominator and you will get nice new equations with no fractions but amazingly they still have the same solution because as long as you do it to everything whether you add subtract multiply or divide remember we don't multiply or divide with zero right you are going to get a different looking equation but it will have the same solution all right all right i'm going to clear that out so it's a little bit cleaner move this up a little bit here okay now i have decimals now again i'm going to show you what the book recommends that you do and then i'm going to tell you probably just 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 ignore it okay so if you take a look here i have hundreds and then i have tenths right so the book would say let's go ahead and multiply that entire equation by a hundred because that will eliminate all of the decimals. So we would get 225t plus 500 is equal to 135, and then we're going to have that extra decimal place because we're going to move it two times t, plus 1400, all right? So in my mind, this equation is not really all that much easier than this one, especially if you're using a calculator but let's go ahead and say okay well now i have an equation with variables on both sides what is my smaller coefficient 225 is my smaller coefficient on my variable term so i'm going to subtract that away doesn't look like i have the space to do it there so i'm going to write it down here so those are going to cancel right so what am i going to be left with 500 is equal to, well, let's see if we subtract here, 1350 minus 2 
25. What's that? Uh, 1, 1, 2, 5, T. Did I do that right? Right, because 125, that would be 3. No, that would be 75. My bad. All righty. Here we go. Okay, so much for doing this mental math way. I think I'm a little short on the uh, the mental acuity that I need right now. So we're going to do this the old-fashioned way. I'm going to borrow. I'm going to make that a 4 and put a 1. 10 minus 5 is 5. 4 minus 2 is 2. Right? And 125. Gee, Mr. E's, if you had just made that a 1, you would have been in good shape. All right, so there we go. So we have 1, 1, 2, 5, T plus 1,400. Let's add a couple extra shots to that coffee, get you thinking a little more clearly, Mr. Reeves. Okay, and then what are we going to do? All right, now we have an equation with variables on both. Well, no, we don't have equation with variables on both sides. Now we have a two-step equation you know what I think I'm at this point I'm gonna open up my calculator because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get a decimal answer here and again I don't think that this method is really any easier all right so now I'm gonna subtract 1400 from each side okay and when I do that I'm gonna get what negative uh, 900 right is equal to 1125t. All right, so let's just double check your math because I'm really doubting myself now. 500 minus 1400 is, yeah, negative 900. But now I'm going to divide both sides by 1125, 1125, and I get t is equal to. Let's see here, negative 900 divided by 1125, and the answer I get is negative 0 0.8. Okay? Okay. And honestly, I don't think that was really any easier, do you? I'm not going to rewrite the answers there. If I had done it the other way, 2.25t plus 5 equals 13.5t plus 14. Again, I'm going to go ahead and work this one out uh, just to make sure my answer is correct and to show that we could get the same answer, right? What would I do? I would subtract 2.25t 2.25t from each side. And again, if you're allowed to use a calculator, which you are, then I'm simply going to do 13.5 minus 2.25, and what do I get? 11.25. So now I have 5 is equal to 11.25t plus 14, right? And then I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides, and what do I get? I get negative 9 equals 11.25t. Is this looking familiar? The only difference is the decimals over a couple places, right? 11.25, 11.25. Do you guys see that? Here we had negative 900 divided by 1,200. Sorry, 1,125. All we have is the decimal back two places, which means we're going to get the same answer, aren't we? So if I put this in my calculator, I'm going to get the same exact answer, right? I'm going to do negative 9 divided by 11.25. And what do I get? I get negative 0 0.8. So in my humble opinion, it actually was easier to do it this way than to do it this way. Having two more decimal places really did not simplify it for me at all, especially because I had use of the calculator, which is why I'm going to recommend just stick with the decimals, right? And this is going to be 1.6. Do you agree 1.6 is smaller than 3.6? So I divide one point, sorry, I subtract 1.6w from each side. What do I get? I get 2.0w is equal to 24, right? And then I divide by 2.0, which is really just 2, and I get w equals 12. So just keep the decimals, all right? That's my recommendation. Just keep the decimals. Eliminate the fractions. Keep the decimals. All right, let's do a few of these word problems and then this video will be 
Done. All right, so you're going to see a lot of problems like this, all right, where you have comparisons on two sides. And since money involves decimals, all right, many, many times these problems that have money, you're going to get these rational decimal um coefficients all right so here we go members of the wide waters club pay 105 each summer season plus 950 each time they rent a boat all right and if you take a look all right how many times it says here at the end would they have to rent a boat in order to pay the same amount so that's our variable okay remember when we're looking to find out what we don't know we look at the end of the problem all right so that's the cost for members and then we have the cost for non-members, all right? Non-members don't pay the 105 because they're not a member, but they have to pay more. They have to pay 1475 each time they rent a boat. So you can see they're not paying that 105, but what are they paying? They're paying, um, they're paying $5.25 more each time. So the question is, uh, what's W? How many times do they have to rent the boat to to um, have the same amount. Now again, the textbook would have you multiply everything by 100, but I'm gonna say no way, Jose. I'm just gonna work it out the way it is. What's my smaller coefficient? 9.5 is smaller. 9.5 is smaller than 14.75. I'm gonna cancel that off. I'm gonna get 105 is equal to, again, what do we say here? All right, 75 minus 50, there's that 25 cents, and 14 minus 9 is 5. So they are paying $5.25 more each time. The question is, how many times of paying that $5.25 more will it take to catch up with that $105 that the member had to pay? All right, and again, you are perfectly welcome to use a calculator 105 divided by 5.25 gives me 20 all right so the answer is 20 times so if you are going to rent a boat less than 20 times don't become a member if you're going to rent a boat more than 20 times become a member and if you're going to rent a boat exactly 20 times flip a coin because it really doesn't matter at all. Okay, how about this one right here? Margo could purchase tile at a store for $0.79 cents per tile and rent a saw for $24. At another store, she gets the tile saw for free. What a deal. But it costs her $1.19. So what's that? An extra $0.40 cents per tile. This is very similar to the last problem, right? So $0.79 cents per per tile plus twenty four dollars for the for the saw we want to know when that will equal a dollar nineteen for the tile plus a zero for the saw but we don't put that plus zero all right so what are we going to do we're going to take away the coefficient i'm sorry we're going to take away the variable term with the smaller coefficient do you agree 79 is smaller than a dollar nineteen all right and that gives us 24 is equal to, and what did we say that was? Was 79 minus a dollar 19. All right, what? Do, I just, sorry, a dollar 19 minus 79. We should go the other way, right? 79, 89 would be 10 cents. 99 would be 20 cents. Dollar 19, that's an extra 30 cents, right? 0 0.30. All right, so it's 30 cents more per tile all right if we divide both of those by 0 0.30 0 0.30 we're not dividing by the t all right how many of those 30 cents are there in 24 all right so here we go let's double check mr reeves math just to make sure 1.19 all right we're going to subtract away 0 0.79 so the difference in the cost is 40 cents not 30 cents i knew gosh i said 40 cents the first time didn't i all right alec day is sighing right now oh mr reeves again all righty okay 40 cents there we go so 24 divided by 40 cents 
Well, 24 divided by 4 would be 6, right? So 25 divi 24 divided by 0.4 should be 60. Again, if we want to double check because Mr. E's math is highly un dependable 24 maybe I should have been a history teacher 24 divided by no offense to history teachers you can be good at both history and math all right here we go um, 60 mysteries probably wouldn't be good at either so the answer is I was right T is equal to 60 so the answer to this question would be 60 tiles all righty a couple more problems all right there that i happen to know are going to show up one is this one it's a very interesting problem you know that fahrenheit and celsius are different scales all right and almost all of the time if you know the temperature in fahrenheit is going to be different than the temperature in celsius but there is one particular temperature where they are the same isn't that amazing all right, so you've got this equation that says if you want to know what Fahrenheit is, multiply by 1.8 C and add 32. By the way, we often see it as 9 fifths C plus 32 is uh, the way you often see it written. But 1.8 is the same as 9 fifths. All right, if we want to know when they're the same, all right, what we can simply do is either replace c with f or f with c so if i take this equation i'm going to read it, write it down here well if they're the same then f is equal to c so i want to know when c is equal to 1.8 c plus 32. all right so that is the equation that i would solve all right so what would i do then all right this is 1.0 c now, in this case, most of the time I always say subtract away the smaller one, right? Now, I got to tell you, in this case, I wouldn't do that because that would make this side zero and everything would be on this side. So this is an exception to the rule. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1.8C from both sides, even though that's the opposite of what I usually tell you to do and that's going to give me 0 negative 0 0.8 C is equal to 32 and again the reason why I didn't is because that would make this side be 0 then when I divide both sides by negative 0 0.8 let's do that on our calculator here we go Mr. Reeves calculator 32 divided by negative 0 0.8 when I do that I get negative 40 C is negative 4. So what does that tell us? That tells us that at negative 40 degrees Celsius, it's the same as negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Isn't that crazy? Isn't it crazy to know that the temperature is the same for that one particular number? Everything above that or below that they are different and finally this last problem here all right we haven't really talked about consecutive even numbers consecutive odd numbers or consecutive numbers at all so real quick consecutive means in a row so if i said i'm going to have consecutive numbers all right one two three four five dot 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 those are consecutive if i said i wanted consecutive odd numbers well then it would be one three five seven nine eleven dot 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 and if i said i wanted consecutive even numbers well then it would be two four six eight ten right so if you look at how far apart are consecutive numbers well they are one apart to get to the next number you always add one how about consecutive odds well they are two apart right consecutive odds are two apart how about consecutive evens they are also two apart all right so if you were to list three consecutive even integers all right you'll notice that it says jared did k and k plus one and k plus two well that would be ladies and gentlemen if they were regularly consecutive 
By the way, if you're going, well, why is it k plus 2? You said it's plus 1. Because our original number is k, right? So this is k plus 1. This is then k plus 1 plus 1, which is k plus 2, right? And then the next one would be k plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, which would be k plus 3 and so on, right? If we're going to do consecutive even numbers, the first one is going to be k, but the next one's not going to be k plus 1. It's going to be k plus 2, and then the next one's not going to be k plus 2, right? It's going to be k plus 2 plus 2, which of course is k plus 4. So that is how you would do consecutive even numbers. And by the way, that's also how you would do consecutive odd numbers because they're also two apart. And if you go, wait, wait, how could it be the same for consecutive even or consecutive odd? Aren't you going to get a different answer? Well, here's the thing. If you are doing consecutive even, that first number is going to be an even number, right? If you're doing consecutive odd, that first number is going to be an odd. An odd plus 2 will always be an odd. An even plus 2 will always be an even. All right, so this is what his equation should have been. And if he had done that instead, he would have gotten the correct answer. I'll let you guys go ahead and solve that. By the way, remember combining like terms, k plus k plus k, that would be 3k, right? 2 plus 4 would be 6, and then there would be our equation with variables on both sides, and we would go from there. All right, okay, so that's all I'm going to do on this video. Our second video from lesson 18.2, equations with rational numbers. Remember, when you have an equation with fractions, multiply the entire equation by the least common denominator or the least common multiple of the denominators that will eliminate the fractions but give you the same solution. When you have decimals, if you want to, you can, you can, can I find a decimal problem here? You can multiply by 10 to eliminate tenths or 100 to eliminate hundredths or 1,000 to eliminate thousands. But my recommendation to you is just keep it the same and work it out because it's really not any easier. And I think sometimes it's actually more challenging. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Until next time, so long. Farewell. Abhidazen. Goodbye.